I think my views are well known that uh, over time, the only way that uh, Israel is going to be truly secure and the only way that the Palestinians are going to be able to meet the aspirations of their people is if there are two states living side by side in peace and security. Uh, those talks, which Secretary Kerry put enormous effort in, and before that, uh, a number of our uh, envoys and Secretary Clinton put an enormous uh, effort in. Uh, have stalled. That's what he said. I don't know why we didn't hear it. Uh, but it stalled because Abbas doesn't want to meet with Netanyahu without preconditions. And Abbas ripped up the Oslo Accords. I haven't heard one. It was two weeks ago, and I haven't heard boo from this administration about that. All right, let's watch this, and we'll be joined by Jonathan Allen, uh, and we'll talk some politics. Secretary Clinton, how would you not be a third term of President Obama? Well, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, I, I think being the first woman president would be quite a change from the presidents we've had up until this point, including uh, President Obama. Is there a policy difference? Well, there is a lot that I uh, would like to do to build on the successes of President Obama, but also, as I'm laying out, to go beyond. All right, that was, you know, the more I watched that, it was so poorly staged. Uh, joining us now is Jonathan Allen, uh, as promised, chief political correspondent for Vox.com, former White House bureau chief for Politico, and author of HRC, State Secrets and the Rebirth of Hillary Clinton. Hello, Jonathan. Hey, good to be with you. Good to talk to you again. Uh, you know, you wrote a, a piece, um, uh, well, well, we'll get to that in a second, but I mean, this, this woman thing with Hillary, she's got bigger problems than the whole, you know, uh, gender thing, and I'm a woman, and I'm different. Now it turns out that the FBI is, is probing whether or not uh, Hillary violated the gross negligence provision of the Espionage Act. Well, it wouldn't be surprising to me to know that the FBI was... Uh, looking at all of the uh, emails that they've uh, been able to obtain to see uh, whether uh, there's any violation there of uh, the Espionage Act or even the lesser mishandling of uh, classified information. So uh, it's not shocking that they're looking into it. I think the question will be what they, what they come out of it with. Well, you know, when you, when you consider that uh, you have other people, I mean, there were two people uh, that, that I can name, uh, you know, in, in particular, uh, who were sentenced under the, uh, one is Thomas Drake, he was indicted in 2010 under the Espionage Act for sharing unclassified material with the Baltimore Sun reporter. Um, he went to Congress with his concerns about the NSA, and, uh, and, and another guy who handed over emails, there was one missing, and he was charged with that under the act, even though they didn't, they couldn't prove and didn't even allege that he was responsible for the one email to be missing. She, she's deleted thousands of emails. She's admitted it on top of all the classified information we've seen. How could she possibly, if there's equal justice under the law, how could she skate on this? Well, I think there are a couple of things going on here. I mean, that number one, uh, I think, well, I don't know about you. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Uh, but, but number two, I think what you, what you have to look at and what I think prosecutors do look at is the intent in terms of people who, in the case of, for instance, David Petraeus, who was uh, sharing information uh, with his lover and biographer, you've got a situation where there's clearly an intent to make that information public uh, rather than just negligence. I think in the case of somebody who shares with a reporter, uh, same, kind of, same kind of thing. So. Uh, and obviously, anybody who shares secrets with our enemies, uh, you know, has a, has, you know, bad intent. So, uh, I think the intent is a question that uh, prosecutors would look at. Well, uh, we'll see because I, I, you know, again, this uh, this Jeffrey Sterling uh, was charged with uh, obstruction of justice, convicted of it because a single email was missing from his account, even though the government could not show he was responsible for it. Um, you know, she deleted 30,000 of them. I, I, I just don't see how, how she could get away with it. All right, let, let's, uh, let's concentrate a little bit here on the speaker's race. Um, where are we with that? I mean, it seems like Paul Ryan, if you listen to the reports that I've seen and read, um, you know, he may be fading away now because he was making a whole list of demands uh, that basically he'd be anointed, and uh, that naturally the conservatives in the, uh, in the Republican caucus didn't like that. They were frozen. Uh, I think John Boehner's going to be the speaker for a while. Uh, I think Paul Ryan uh, was smart to think that if he was going to take on the speaker's job, he wanted to be able to extract as many promises as possible from uh, the Freedom Caucus and from others in the conference who, uh, you know, who, have, uh, who have wanted to see some rules changes, wanted to see some change in leadership. 
Um, the problem is that the Freedom Caucus and their allies don't have a candidate who's access acceptable to the rest of the conference. So there's, I mean, it's sort of a civil war situation where one side can win uh, for a while, but they're not able to completely defeat the other side. So then, you know, the side that's losing then eventually gains a little bit of power and it goes back and forth and uh, no one really gets uh, scrubbed from the field. So, uh, you know, I think we're going to have to wait and see, certainly at least until Republicans come back to Washington. Well, it's going to be uh, very interesting. And, uh, you know, Boehner sitting in there, Republicans fear that a deal has already been cut, you know, on the debt ceiling and the, everything else with Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi was actually out defending uh, uh, Boehner uh, the other day, which, you know, doesn't usually happen. <laughs> well, they got some stuff done together uh, uh, over the last couple of years. They got the, uh, the DOC fix, which is uh, Medicare reimbursement rates for doctors. Every year Congress has to try to figure out how to plug a hole in the budget over that, so they fixed that for a long period of time. We saw them working together uh, at least for a while on trade promotion until Pelosi decided she was uh, going to get out there against it and then for it. I, I'm not sure exactly where she landed, but for a while it seemed like she was working with Boehner on that. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think she detests John Boehner as much as she detests what might come after him. Back to Hillary Clinton, um, and of course you wrote the book on her. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, we're hearing all kinds of uh, getting indications that John, uh, Joe Biden, I, I mean, he's in if you listen to all the reports, and he's got to do it very quickly if he was going to file in various states, uh, et cetera. They say we could expect an announcement in the next few days. If he gets in, what does that do to the race on the Democrat side? Well, I think it certainly shakes it up. The question is whether uh, Biden is able to gain traction right now. He's uh, in third place in the polls. That could certainly change if he gets in. He could go up. He could go down. Uh, my view, though, is that the Democratic race has always been defined essentially by Hillary Clinton. And so I think what you're likely to end up seeing happen, even though it's not what the polls show now, is that there would be a split of the anti-Hillary Clinton vote uh, between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. And in a general election, where right now she loses to Trump, to Carson, to Carly Fiorina, to Jeb Bush, and her trustworthiness and her honesty levels are in the toilet. And in fact, among Democrats, she's been slowly decreasing poll by poll by poll. How does she overcome that in a general election? I think it's a tough question for her. I think the uh, bigger issue for her right now isn't whether she can win the Democratic nomination, but if she could uh, put together the coalition that she would need to and put together the votes she'd need to to win a general election. Now that said, uh, we heard the same arguments about Barack Obama in 2008. Hillary Clinton pulled better against, uh, against McCain in 2008 than Obama did during a, a big chunk of the primary, and yet uh, Obama obviously didn't, uh, didn't have trouble winning yeah, against McCain. Yeah, but he wasn't under FBI investigation, and the lies didn't That's keep true. piling up. You know? I mean, it's going to be kind of tough. Hey, Jonathan, great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, folks, coming up next, the Malsberg panel. And uh, we'll be joined by Larry Elder and David Goodfriend. A lot of fireworks there, I presume. All right, we're coming back. Don't go away.